Hey guys, my name is Stoof. Thanks for watching my painting channel. Today we are going to paint a monarch butterfly. My reference photo is in the upper right corner of the uh, video you're seeing here. And to get started, what I'm using is some thinned down oil paint. This whole entire painting is done with oil paint on canvas, uh, but for getting started, I'm just using some of my ultramarine blue, thinned down with my uh, milk paint uh, solvent, which is the safer alternative to using mineral spirits. And just trying to figure out where everything's going to be. Started with the base of the flower in the center of the painting at the bottom and then I worked my way up and put the body of the butterfly and then I started to work on those wings. I'll continue to adjust the shape and the length of the wings throughout the video until I get the rest of the detail into the wings, um, but for now I'm just kind of laying out where everything's going to be in this painting. Once I finished outlining the sketch for the painting, the next step was to fill in that background color. So we have a very blurry background uh, with lots of earthy tones, uh, browns, whites, beiges. So I went with those colors, but I also wanted to add some colors that complement the orange and yellow that I'm going to have on the butterfly and the flower. I'm actually going to be turning that flower yellow. Uh, so I wanted to have blues and purples that uh, contrast my orange and yellows in the butterfly and the flower. So I add some of those colors into my background blend as well. And when you're filling in the background, it's very important to just completely cover up all the white on that canvas. You, uh, if you end up going over parts of your object, that's fine. We're gonna go back over and paint uh, and define those borders a little bit better later, but for now, just make sure you don't have any white spaces left on your canvas in the background. In case you are wondering, the brush I'm using here is a medium-sized uh, flat-tipped brush, and I'm just using crisscross back and forth brush strokes to fill in all of that space and make sure I'm not leaving any white or uh, letting the paint look uh, translucent at all. I wanna have a nice opaque layer of paint. Okay, once I finished painting the background and I painted the base under that flower, I started to fill in the black part of the wings on the monarch butterfly. So monarch butterflies have a very distinctive pattern on their wings and you want to make sure you're accurately portraying that so you want to pay attention to the detail and the, the patterns on each wing. You want to make sure you're copying exactly where each line is going to go and painting it in the same way you see it. So uh, I started out by just filling in all that black except for the areas where it's just a thin black line. Uh, I left that those spots uh, bare for now because I'm gonna go in with my orange and I don't want my orange to bleed in with my black since I'm using oil paint. They're gonna take a couple days to dry, so I wanted to use my lighter colors first. Uh, when I knew there was a chance it would bleed in with the black, I went with the lighter color first.
starting to fill in my flower petals. I'm just using a nice cadmium yellow mixed with a little bit of lemon yellow uh, just to get my nice yellow uh, warm color for my flower petals. I'm going to go back later once this dries a little bit more and add the shading uh, where the petals are folding over and lights not hitting them where they're in shadow and uh, use a little bit of some more browns and oranges in those sections but I did want to change this flower from that orange color to a yellow color just so it stood out a little bit more from the butterfly. Okay, now we have the fun part of the brilliant orange on the wings. So if you look closely at the reference photo, you'll see that we have uh, like a middle tone orange on that wing that is closest to us on the top, and then we have some more cadmium reds and some raw umber and maybe some um, burnt sienna on that wing that's the, the top wing in the back. And then we have more yellows in the bottom wing that's closest to us. So we have uh, quite a bit of variation in those warm orange tones from the wings. So that's something that I want to accurately show in my painting here. And not only do we have a change in color and value between each wing, but if you look in each section of each wing, there's a change from a little bit more red at the base to a little bit more yellow at the top of each section or vice versa. Uh, some of the wings have barely any yellow or orange in them and have more of a muted gray brown tone. So uh, pay attention to each section of the wings and try to accurately uh, display that color in your painting from what you're seeing in your picture. Now that I have all of the orange on my wings, I can go back and start to paint those black lines that separate each section of the wing. So I'm using a very small liner brush. Uh, it's about a centimeter long, the, the brush hairs, and the bristles are very thin. They, uh, I also thin the paint down some more with my paint thinner before dabbing it in my blob of paint and then running it onto the canvas just to get a nice smooth uh, line of paint where it's not gonna leave like a texture or any type of a bump and spots where the paint doesn't flow. I like to have nice flowy lines uh, with my paint, so that's why I thin it down a lot too when I'm painting, if that makes sense. <laughs> At this point, the butterfly wings are starting to look like a monarch butterfly, but you'll notice that that 
wing close to us, that is the top wing, isn't quite as vibrant orange as it currently looks in the reference photo. So that's something that I'm going to come back to later. I'm letting that paint dry uh, after I touch up the details a little bit more, and then I'm going to go back in with that really vibrant orange and paint that over top to get that really bright color that just pops and draws your eye right into that wing. Now it's time to add the dots on the wing of the butterfly. Now those dots look like they're white, but none of those dots are a true white. They all have shades of blue, a little bit of uh, brownish gray in them, uh, but none of those are actually a pure white. Some of them get pretty close, but if they were a pure white, then your eye would instantly be drawn to those dots, and your eye is drawn more to the orange uh, rather than the dots, so we're going to try to make those dots look more like they do in the picture by dulling down the white with a little, little bit of brown, or a little bit of blue, or a little bit of purple and brown. Uh, just to keep them from popping out too much. As I mentioned before, I adjust the length of these orange sections on the butterfly's wing so that they match a little bit closer to the reference photo. Uh, they should have been a little bit longer and once I get that done I do let that paint sit some more and then I will go back with some brighter vibrant oranges later.
Okay guys, I gave my paint some time to dry and now it's time to go back over that top wing that's closest to us with our cadmium reds and yellows to make that orange nice and bright. So that's what I'm working on here. And once I get that orange nice and bright, I'm gonna go back with my liner brush using the black paint and I'm gonna uh, finish defining those lines and fixing up the edges of the wing a little bit with my black. to the flower at the bottom of the painting. I'm using a mix of cadmium yellow light and white for the lighter portions of the flower and then for the shaded portions of the flower I'm using my cadmium medium and I'm using a blend uh, that brown blob you see uh, in the center closest to you there. Uh, I was mixing that with some of my yellows uh, for the shadow color and that blend is burnt sienna burnt umber, and ultramarine blue. So those are some cooler earthy tones that I was using for the shaded portions of the flower. The brush I'm using for the flower is a small round tipped brush. It's not quite a liner brush, it has a little bit uh, more bristles than a liner brush, but still allows me to get a good amount of detail while getting some good paint coverage, so I prefer that small round tip brush for my flower here. In general, I am just following the same shading patterns that are in the flower in my reference photo. I'm just using different colors. I wanted to have more yellow, and then I'm going with shadow tones that you would find on a yellow flower as well, instead of the, those orange uh, brown hues you see in reference photo.
my finishing touch for this painting was boosting that contrast on my shadows and my highlights on the flower to make that flower just draw your eye in a little bit more into the painting. So I used uh, more of my brown and blue mix there just to further define the edges of the petals and I used a mix of white and just a little bit of cadmium yellow light to really boost that highlight on the areas where the sunlight is hitting the flower petals. So that just really brings your eye into the painting. And once that was done, I signed the painting, touched up a little bit of the background, and I called it a painting. Okay, here is my finished butterfly painting. This one was a lot of fun to paint. I enjoyed this one. I post painting videos every Thursday, so if you'd like to, you can subscribe to my channel and you'll get these painting videos every Thursday. And I hope you enjoyed, and thanks for watching. Bye-bye!